Our next plenary speaker is Peter Paula, who's a, a mathematician um, from Austria and a, a faculty member at uh, RISC and the Johannes Kepler uh, University uh, in Linz, Austria, which was the uh, site of the last OPSPA meeting. He was a local organizer with Christoph Putschen for that meeting, which I remember quite fondly. His expertise in uh, symbolic computation and combinatorics and special functions in in 2013, he was elected a fellow of the AMS. It's my honor to, to introduce. Thank you very much, Howard. Uh, so thanks also to your uh, colleagues from the organizing committee for inviting me, because it's just a big pleasure uh, to speak at the OPSFAR, and in particular, in, at this occasion that is uh, dedicated to the memory of Dick Askey, uh, it's just, it's, I, I feel honored very much. Uh, the only drawback is that I could, I cannot be present in Montreal, uh, which I was looking forward tremendously. But this is, uh, this is life. Uh, another thanks go to Jose Savard. Uh, she did a great job, and I'm, I'm sure she's still doing a great job during this week. In uh, she and her colleagues in setting things up so properly, it's just a pleasure uh, uh, to 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 do this thing elect electronically. Uh, so uh, uh, concerning the mathematics, what I'm going to tell you in uh, the remaining time is, I will speak about some connections uh, between two different universes of mathematical objects. On one hand, side the holonomic functions and sequences. And on the other hand, uh, modular forms. Let's just jump right into uh, starting with holonomic sequences. So th the name is, is somehow overly scholarly, but uh, it's a very simple notion. Uh, a sequence is called holonomic, or Stanley would call it P-recursive, if it's satisfying a, 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 a linear relation with polynomial coefficients, as you see displayed here. A, a holonomic function is uh, uh, a, a function that is uh, uh, satisfying also a linear relation, but this time a differential relation uh, with polynomial coefficients. And uh, both notions are intimately related. Namely, if you have a coefficient sequence of a holonomic function, the coefficient sequence is holonomic, and vice versa, if you build over this holonomic sequence, the corresponding generating function, the function is holonomic in the sense that we defined. If you are in combinatorics, uh, you see lots of holonomic sequences and functions in Stanley's books. If you are interested in uh, algorithmic features, uh, you, you uh, might look into this little booklet uh, that I wrote years ago with Manuel Powers. If you are in special functions uh, in the 64 edition of the handbook by Abramowitz and Stegen, uh, you'll find about 60% of the entries to be holonomic. I did not do a systematic uh, account. I, I somehow did, but uh, I, I lost my notes. Uh, so in the NIST successor project, I would guess it's 40 to 50% of what's there is holonomic or Q holonomic. And most, last but not least, uh, another red book by uh, George Andrews, Dick Askin, Wrench and Roy, uh, most of the entries there are dealing with holonomic functions and uh, sequences. Holonomic closure properties are these uh, are properties that are uh, of uh, uh, algorithmic, of primary algorithmic relevance, I would say. So, uh, what, what you see here is uh, taken from work by Sergei Suslov, it's an integral that generalizes the orthogonality relation of Laguerre polynomials. And on the right hand side, uh, you see its evaluation in terms of something times 3F2. Uh, 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 and the uh, orthogonal polynomial message here is it relates Laguerre polynomials or generalized Laguerre polynomials to Meixner, to special instances of Meixner polynomials. Uh, and as, a, as an algorithmic note, identities like this are easy exercises for Christoph Kutcher and holonomic function packages, which just implement holonomic properties in this sense, that if you, for instance, know that the sum and sequence here, this is a hypergeometric sequence where you sum over, if uh, uh, the sum and sequence is holonomic, which it is because it's hypergeometric, so it's satisfying a relation 
a, a difference recurrent, a, a difference equation of order one. So you'll know since this terminates at M, the corresponding sum by holonomic property also is, is, is by holonomic closure property also is holonomic. So the right-hand side gives, uh, the right-hand side can be specified in terms of a holonomic uh, recurrence. In this case, it's a three-term recurrence. On the left-hand side, if you specify the Laguerre in terms of the holonomic differential equation, you multiply now not the functions in some expressions, but you multiply the differential equations, you get as a result another holonomic differential equation uh, uh, describing the product. You do the same uh, by multiplying in the x power here, and uh, last but not least, you multiply in the exponential, you get a holonomic differential equation. You can rearrange this differential equation that after integration of the corresponding thing, you get a recurrence uh, in M say, uh, which then should match the recurrence on the right-hand side. Uh, after checking two initial values, uh, you are done in improving this. So this is exploiting general holonomic closure problems. Let me just ask uh, whether you still hear me. In the second, so the second universe I was indicating is the universe of modular forms and modular functions. So uh, let me uh, start by quoting Don Sagay from, from a survey article he, 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 he wrote some years ago. Uh, he was emphasizing the aspect that there is, there is a reason uh, for the great usefulness or for the unreasonable effectiveness of classical modular forms, the, a major reason is that they are calculable, as he says here, they are calculable invariants. Uh, for instance, the, the corresponding uh, modular group uh, where the modular transformation is related to uh, the, the weight uh, of, of the modular form. So uh, Arthur Dixit was so kind to introduce modular forms. So the K, in, the K in his presentation is the weight, the level of the corresponding uh, uh, congruence subgroup of the special linear group. Uh, these are calculable invariants once you know this invariants. So proving identities like that. So this is a fancy way to write down the Eulerian pentagonal number theorem or this uh, famous identity due to Jacobi. If you know this invariants, uh, the proof of these identities is just checking sufficiently many coefficients of the powers of Q in the corresponding expansion. So this is the convenience uh, that these objects uh, bring along. Uh, what we need uh, in the rest of this talk is the dedicated eta function, which in the Q notation is this. And here it's then made explicit that the Q is nothing but the exponential in two pi i tau, where uh, so Arthur was using Z, uh, I'm using tau being an element from the upper half plane. Uh, later, we will use uh, the Jacobi data functions not in Q. We will deal uh, uh, with them in terms of the X, where the X is defined as the exponential, where I take away the factor two here. So in short, it's Q to one half. So this is dedicated eta. This is Jacobi data. And what we need for our example with later a couple of minutes there is the modular lambda function that comes, you divide the right hand, you divide the left hand side by the right hand side. The quotient arising here is this quotient, and this quotient is nothing but the modular lambda function. It's not the modular form, it's now a modular function. Let me briefly uh, repeat about modular form. The, the most important modular form feature is. Atul already mentioned that the dedicated eta has weight one half. So if you raise it to the power of 24, you get weight 12 as an automatic, uh, as an automorphic factor power involved here. Uh, you get uh, modular forms of weight one uh, with regard to subgroups of the special linear groups. So subgroups means uh, I, I use matrices A, B, C, D over the integers that satisfy certain divisibility conditions. So for instance, the two here says that this C should be divisible by two. Under such matrices, then this transformation uh, introduces this automat automorphic factor with the power of one. So the weight here is one. Also in the data three case, the weight is one. And since the lambda, the lambda comes as the quotient of two datas of the data two and data three powers, this automorphic factor disappears 
So we have the, as a, a factor here, the trivial factor one, and then a modular form with weight zero is uh, uh, called modular function. This is uh, the basic terminology we need here. Why do I call them? Maybe it comes here to uh, set this uh, orally. Why do I call this in this talk, uh, these objects anti-holonomic functions? They, they, they certainly don't satisfy any holonomic differential equation because, uh, so if you look at the linear differential equation with a polynomial leading coefficient, so all coefficients are polynomials, but with a polynomial leading coefficient, uh, then this coefficient has only finitely many zeros. So in, 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 if, if you look at the solution at a certain neighborhood, uh, there are only finitely many zeros of this solution, uh, finitely many singularities of the solution. So you always are able to, it, to, to do an analytic continuation uh, 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 that, that goes beyond this initial neighborhood. Uh, in, in the modular form case, uh, this does not happen because uh, if, you, if you map from the upper half plane with the e to the two pi i tau, you map uh, the, the variable to the open unit is in Q or in X, as we have seen, uh, then the, 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 the boundary circle of the unit disk uh, serves as a, as a tough boundary. So there's no analytic continuation possible. So it's clear that these objects are kind of anti in the sense uh, uh, that they are, have an overwhelming number of singularities or cannot be analytic continued uh, uh, beyond uh, an initial disk. Uh, this is fact one concerning anti-holonomic, uh, uh, the anti-holonomic feature, but there is already an algebra, uh, algorithmic uh, bridge uh, between holonomic objects and uh, anti-holonomic functions. Namely, one can view many modular forms if not all, so this is a meta statement, as limits of Q holonomic functions and sequences. So far we dealt with holonomic, not with Q holonomic, so let me tell you what Q holonomic is. So Q holonomic sequences are sequences, again satisfying a linear difference, a difference equation with polynomial coefficients, but now you included the argument here. So the argument instead of N in the previous case, it's a polynomial in Q to the N. Each polynomial coefficient is, a, should, is supposed to be a polynomial in Q to the N. As a standard example, let's look at this uh, order one relation. If you unfold this uh, relation, you end up with the Q factorial that you already saw in the previous talks. So this is the uh, Q shifted factorial. If I unfold it in the negative direction, you get this definition. Q binomial coefficients, if you fix one of the parameters here in this relation, the K is fixed, you get again uh, this Q holonomic feature, explicit. Q binomial summation, so here is already an indication of how closure properties work. So you have the, 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 the sequence one over Q say sub K, uh, you have this uh, sequence uh, uh, displayed here in blue. Uh, one of the closure properties tells us that if you do a convolution of Q, to, Q of two Q holonomic sequences, uh, the, the convolution described in, uh, in, in this way, uh, the result again gives you a Q holonomic sequence. If you do a termwise multiplication with another Q holonomic sequence, the whole result is Q holonomic. So the binomial sum, the Q binomial sum is again a Q holonomic object. And we know an explicit evaluation, the product evaluation of this, uh, that uh, uh, is uh, the standard description of the Q binomial uh, theorem. So both sides fit to the Q uh, holonomic paradigm. What about Q holonomic functions? Instead of going with the differential operator, we go with the Q uh, uh, differential operator uh, displayed here. So again, uh, uh, the exchange is only in the differential operator. Uh, such a Q holonomic function satisfies a differential equation with, uh, with, that is linear with polynomial coefficients. Often in practice, uh, you don't use the Q uh, differential operator. So at least not in my world, uh, um, in my world, uh, the Q shift is much more prominently uh, present. So it's shifting the uh, argument uh, X by Q. 
this is equivalent, this gives us an equivalent definition for a function P and Q holonomic. So it's a satisfying a linear relation uh, where the, this is the shift uh, uh, on Fx uh, R times. So this means the resulting uh, uh, object is an X times Q to the R. Again, all the coefficients need to be polynomial. Example, look at the Q binomial sum. If you shift with regard to X, you will find a uh, so shift in regard to X as uh, uh, this feature that is this rational function times the Fx, which is nothing but uh, uh, what I use here in this statement, uh, use the Q binomial theorem. You have seen this notation in uh, the previous talks already. Uh, so I can skip that, uh, but I want, I want to underline that this relation between coefficient sequences and holonomic functions uh, again hold also in the Q holonomic uh, 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 world. So a Q holonomic sequence leads to a Q holonomic function if you take it as a coefficient sequence, vice versa. If you have a generating function that is Q holonomic, you know that the co coefficient sequence is again Q holonomic. Example for, an, at least I should show, I thought, at least one concrete example of an algorithmic application. How would you prove using this, uh, real, this relation here, how would you prove the Q, uh, the Q binomial theorem in uh, this, using these holonomic, here Q holonomic features? You load the package by Christoph Kutschan, Q generating functions, you feed in we want to convert this coefficient sequence into a, a, a Q shift uh, relation for the Fx. So we start with a Q with a recurrence for this uh, for this uh, coefficient sequence. This is easily done by uh, uh, taking the quotient of two consecutive terms here. It's not in K but in N. So the result. Uh, 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 where you multiply out uh, the denominator, where clear denominators is this. And then the package gives you the following option. You, this Q recurrence, this means QR is Q recurrence. This Q recurrence is then uh, transported to a shift recurrence for the generating function by this comment. And uh, you see the output here. So the recurrence on the sum end level gives you this shift equation on the generating function level. And if you iterate this uh, recurrent, it, it, this shift relation, you get the binomial theorem. So this is how this Q holonomic toolbox or the holonomic toolbox as uh, previously discussed, how this works algorithmically, just to give you an idea of, of a bit more complicated examples. Let's look at the Q analog of uh, plane waves uh, that are here expressed using the Bessel functions. And in terms of uh, Gegenbauer polynomials, there is a, a famous Q analog by Murad and uh, Wiming Tsang, uh, where they use the, case, the Q basic exponential as an analog for this exponential. They use a Q version of the Bessel function here, and they use the Q ultraspherical polynomials here. Let me just show you which version of uh, Jackson of, of Q Basel is used. So Jackson's Q Basel is used here in this instance. Let me show you what is used uh, for the Gegenbauer version, the Q version, this Q ultraspherical polynomials. I'm not 100% sure whether this is the same Q ultraspherical uh, 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 polynomial sequence that uh, uh, Chalma was, was using in his, referring to with regard to Rogers uh, family. I guess it is, but I had no time to check this. What is the Q basic exponential function in the Ismail Sang setting? It's the cos, the Q cosine and the Q sine, where the Q cosines say, just have a look here, is defined in this way. And if you send uh, the parameter, the Q uh, to, to one, uh, you get the standard cosine and the standard exponential function back. Now, algorithmically, you can, uh, uh, this is possible now with the package by, by Christoph Kutschan. You can algorithmically prove this. Of course, you still need to find this Q analog. So finding is still an issue here, but you, you can now, in order, if you set up 
the thing experimentally, you can use Christoph Kutschan's package holonomic functions, which is a more sophisticated package than uh, the Q generating function package that I used for the Q binomial uh, theorem. You can use this package to prove uh, uh, more sophisticated uh, identities like this of the Ismail Sun type. Uh, actually, this is uh, also for the package this Ismail Sun identity, Sang identity is, is, is somehow, it, it's not a trivial, it's not a trivial. Now, uh, back to my statements that modular forms uh, can be viewed or obtained as limits of Q holonomic functions and sequences. The uh, data clean function, which is uh, nothing but uh, the, inverse, the, the uh, inverse version of the partition generating function can be obtained as this Q holonomic function where you then send the argument to Q. So you can view it as a projection or a limit, view this modular form as a limit of a Q holonomic function. You also can view the dedicated eta function as a limit of Q holonomic sequences, either in the product presentation or in this uh, sum presentation where you again send the variable, uh, uh, the variable here, is, uh, here used Z, to the particular value here, it's minus Q. The data function, for instance, data three uh, can be obtained uh, from this version of the binomial uh, theorem that gives you this product times, this is the term-wise product of Q holonomic sequences. If you take the limit, you get from this Q holonomic sequence, you get the uh, modular uh, form, the data function, the data three and also the other data functions can be obtained. In, in this way. So this concludes the first uh, introductory part, uh, first major part of my talk. Uh, this was the first algorithmic uh, a bridge uh, between uh, the universe of modular functions and the anti-holonomic uh, uh, functions uh, uh, that are coming in form of modular forms. In the second part of my talk, uh, I like to discuss a different kind of bridge that for application, I guess is even more relevant depending on what you are doing. So let's start uh, to connect holonomic sequences, holonomic functions uh, with modular forms and modular functions. Let's start again with a toy example to make things concrete. We start with uh, a 2F1 of this form. So again, uh, I was uh, uh, lucky enough that Arthur Dixit introduced a notation of rising uh, uh, factorials. Uh, if, you, if you have not been in his talk, here it's displayed again. So you start with this power series in T, and uh, the task is use the holonomic toolbox uh, to find a differential equation uh, for, for this power series. What you do is, uh, what you can do is, if you use uh, the generating function package from RISC, you can uh, proceed as follows. You compute uh, since this is given, you take sufficiently many coefficients, one, one, one uh, over four, nine over 64, etc. You take this as an initial string, and as you would do uh, when you uh, check with uh, Sloan's uh, uh, online, uh, online encyclopedia of integer sequences, you just try to guess uh, a corresponding differential equation. This is done with this comment. Uh, you use a, this holonomic uh, a toolbox for the Q equal one version, and the package guesses that with this input, this 2F1 as input, that this 2F1 satisfies this differential equation. Of course, if you're expert in hypergeometric series, uh, you know a priori that this satisfies the hypergeometric differential equation. But if you go uh, uh, not with 2F1s, but with higher, it might be more tedious, or you might have uh, a slight deviation from a hypergeometric series. So it's, it's nice uh, to have uh, this, this, this facility available. In order to prove the correctness, since we are in the case of having a, a, a generic expansion variable, we just can do coefficient comparison. And once you guessed the corresponding differential equation, the check is very easy by uh, coefficient wise zero recognition uh, of the correctness of uh, verifying the correctness of the differential. Alternative method is uh, using the relation coefficient sequence holonomic generating function holonomic. So we start with a recursion for the GN for the coefficient sequence. You again uh, just do this, this, the same 
the business, you look at the quotient of two consecutive terms, you clear denominators, you get this recursion because the sequence is, uh, is, is hypergeometric. So we take as input the recursive description of the coefficient sequence and ask the package to convert the recurrence for the coefficient sequence into a differential equation for the generating function, maybe for the G T. And this is done in this way. It's just a conversion. And here you don't need to prove because once you are guaranteed that this is correct, you, you just convert the recursion of the coefficient sequence to a differential equation for the generating function. But just to show you that it's correct, I just displayed uh, the differential equation that we obtained with the previous method. Now we do a variation on the theme. Instead of giving again the same generating function, now we want to expand this generating function. We, we also go for a differential equation, but the task, uh, the primary task should be find an expansion of this uh, generating function in terms of powers of another function, say four times t times one minus t. In order to do this, in order to find these coefficients, you can do the following. You compute sufficiently many values. This is easily done with any computer algebra system at hand. So if you do the expansion, the first terms, you find that these uh, 12 values are the first values that you would find if you do this expansion. Now, based on this initial string of these initial values that are computed, they, they are true values for the CN, we do now a guess how the sequence uh, might proceed. We again do this guess uh, using uh, the package. So we say guess recurrence equation, name it guess a recurrence equation that is satisfied uh, by, by this initial string of a sequence. And the suggestion the system, the system returns is this order one uh, difference equation. So let me summarize. By this guessing, we are led to the following setting. Given the generating function GT, guessed that if the CN are defined recursively in this way or in closed form in this way. If you use the CN as the coefficient sequence of a generating function Y, then this Y does the requested job, namely that if you compose this Y with the given HT, remember this was uh, four, here we have it, four times T times one minus T, uh, that this is true. What we have so far in hands is a guess that if the CN is defined in this way, then this is correct. How do we prove the, correct, the correctness of our guess? Well, for the left-hand side, we have the differential equation already in hand. So the idea, the natural idea would be compute a differential equation for the right-hand side. And this again can be done with holonomic uh, closure properties. So first we compute, so just uh, do this algorithmically with the package we first compute a differential equation for this y, where the CNs are given in this way or with the corresponding recursive description. And in the next step, we compute a differential equation for the composition, which is automatically done by A compose for algebraic compose. And what you get back is this differential equation for the right-hand side, so for the y, composed with the HT. And if you compare this to the differential equation for the left-hand side, for the GT, you see that both differential equations coincide. As a remark, what we proved and discovered actually in this setting, once we, chosen, we have chosen the G and the H, we discovered this relation in a special case where the A and the B in these parameters uh, uh, turned out to be one quarter. Uh, but the same procedure can be used to prove these classical transformation identities between hypergeometric series in just exactly the same fashion. Now we move on to relate holonomic sequences and holonomic functions to modular functions. Uh, details you, you'll find in, in, in this paper uh, published two years ago. So, and as the uh, guiding example, we return back to the data functions, so we take the data three and uh, uh, square it. So the square of data three expressed in terms of so Fourier, its Fourier series presentation in terms of this X, and we take this as the G. Now we take, uh, again, we consider the problem of similar form given a G and given an H, 
expand the G locally in terms of powers of the H. And for the H, we use now this quotient that we discussed at the beginning of my talk, which is the modular lambda function. So the H here is this uh, normalizing uh, rational number times the modular lambda function times one minus the lambda function, similar to the capital H you have seen in the previous example. So the task is fixing this H, which is a modular form, this G, which is a modular form, excuse me, uh, fixing this H, which is a modular function, because this is a modular function, determine this connection coefficients in this expansion. So how do, how you, do you do this? And you do it this exactly the same way as in these previous much more easy examples. Recall the lambda is a modular function, as I said, and uh, uh, both are modular forms. So the quotients lead, the quotient, uh, lead to the modular function, but the square of the theta three, our GT is a modular form of weight one. We recall that modular forms are not satisfying linear differential equations. So actually as a matter of fact, they satisfy in general, non-linear differential equations of order three uh, with constant coefficients. So it's not polynomial coefficients, but constant coefficient, but the non-linearity usually is uh, not easy to handle. This second algebra algorithmic bridge that I want to report on here is that there is an escape from this non-linearity, namely given a modular form G as in our example and the modular function H, suppose this G is analytic uh, at infinity in the upper half plane. In the X plane, it's analytic at zero. So we know there is an expansion uh, in terms uh, of an analytic function by, but the statement is, it's not only that locally an expansion in an analytic uh, function by composed which H exists, but that the H, that the Y here, this expansion function is holonomic. This means that the expansion function has holonomic coefficients. And this is what we use. And let me briefly quote uh, 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 Don Sagier. This local expansion uh, business is at the heart of the original discovery of modular forms by Gauss and of the later work of Fricke and Klein and appears in modern literature as the theory of the uh, Fuchs differential equations or of the gauss manin connection. But it's not nearly as well known as it ought to be and he continues, this fact is perhaps the single most important source of applications of modular forms in other branches of mathematics. So with no apology, we sketch three proofs. So Zagier's third proof is constructive. Uh, so given as in our example, the G, the G and the H, it constructs the corresponding differential equation such that this is true. We take actually an inverse approach we guess we don't construct the differential equation for the y. We guess the differential equation for the y doing this job. And then after the guess, we prove it algorithmically. So we designed a particular algorithm that proves differential equation satisfied by modular form. We'll, uh, I will give a sketch of the basic idea of this algorithm. Overall, our algorithm is based on work by Yifan Yang, and it works as follows. So let me go back to our example. Remember the G was the square of the theta three. The H is this expression in the modular lambda function. And we are after this CN. CN. We want to determine this CN. Then we proceed uh, as previously. We compute the first values. So here, I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we need eight values to guess that in such an expansion with this property, the CNs, the coefficient satisfies an order, satisfy an order one relation. Now we convert this order one uh, recurrence to a differential equation for this Y. This is also done automatically. We say recurrence equation to differential equation with the same holonomic toolbox. So the recurrence for the CN, this one, equivalent to this differential equation for the Y. Just use again, holonomic coefficient sequence gives you a holonomic generating function. So algorithmically, the recurrence for the coefficient sequence is translated to a differential equation for the generating function. It's this differential equation. 
And what we need to do is now we need to prove that this differential equation for a y satisfying this local expansion property is really valid. And this is what we do now. We have to prove the correctness of this differential equation. This uh, algorithm is described in detail in the uh, follow-up paper of the paper that I referred to previously. And uh, it's also available on my, web, on my web page. So what is the setting? Again, let me remind you, given the modular form and the modular function, such that we want to expand this modular function locally in terms, this modular form G in terms of the local, of the uh, modular functions locally, then the function that is doing this expansion in general, if G is analytic, the y is an analytic function. If this is meromorphic, the y is a meromorphic function. So starting in general with some integer here, but we know by uh, theory that it's not just any analytic function or any meromorphic function. It's a function where the coefficients are satisfying a linear recurrence with polynomial coefficients, or polynomial uh, coefficient sequence. So we make a guess on uh, this sequence that we know should be holonomic. We, we, uh, we transform the guest recurrence into a guest differential equation. Question is how to prove this differential equation. Actually, what we now do, look here, this differential equation, the guess, you can state the guess in two versions. In the abstract generating function version, because we have a guess for this uh, uh, recursive recursion for the coefficient sequence, or we have a differential equation for the abstract generating function. So we have this abstract, uh, in, in the abstract sense, is equivalent to the recursion for this CN. However, we know more. We have an additional condition. We know that the Y is such that this relation is satisfied. So this means we are not proving a general abstract differential equation. We are proving a differential equation where the Y is satisfying this property. So in other words, sorry, in other words, we need to prove that if we use as the argument the y, the, 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 sorry, as the, the argument the h, the y on the h, the differentiated version of y on the h, the second derivative of y on the h is satisfying this differential equation. This is what we need to prove. And what we use here is we use this initial relation by the chain rule, we get a relation for this, for this term. It's a rational function in the derivatives of G and H. For this second derivative, again, by iterated application of the chain rule, we get this rational function in derivatives of G and the H. And the proof, the algorithmic method now consists in converting, we rewrite this in using this data, and we convert this version into a relation of this kind, where here I repeat it, in a relation of this kind, where these functions given to us by Young, all the objects involved, let me say this first, are rational functions in G, H, and their derivatives. They are given because the G and the H are given in the Fourier expansion. Here we use in our example X, often you use Q. So the derivatives uh, are immediately obtained. Uh, so this is the uh, uh, derivative with regard to tau in here. So it's, uh, this is uh, banal. So all these derivatives can be computed in the power series presentation. So all the objects arising in this relation are power series in X or in Q, depending on your problem. And uh, moreover, the coefficients here of the Young functions turn out to be modular functions. And the Young functions turn out to be linearly independent functions over the field of this modular function. So in order to prove our differential equation, it's sufficient, since this is a basis, it's sufficient to prove that all these coefficients are zero. And since we know in advance by theory that these coefficients have to be modular functions, we can use this, uh, uh, this uh, principle of unreasonable effectiveness of modular functions and modular forms that I referred to in Sergei's quote, 
So there is an algorithmic method to do a proving of to do zero recognition for this uh, 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 for these coefficients. So here, in order to check that they are zero, you only need to do a certain expansion, so up to a certain power of x or uh, 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 respectively uh, uh, a power of q if you work in, in q and then you have proven the corresponding differential. So in the last remaining seven minutes of my talk, I would like to show you some applications of this guessing and guess and proof paradigm. What we did so far is we started with the sphere of the Jacobi uh, three functions function and we related it to the 2F1. What we also did, this was without uh, uh, modular functions, there was the, the, this relation of the 2F1 with these parameters to the 2F1, this parameter where we have a quadratic transformation. We could have alternatively, we could have derived directly this expansion of the theta squared uh, in uh, this fashion, because this equals this if you replace this argument by lambda. So we are now in very classical water, namely uh, the 2F1 in the modular uh, uh, lambda function is nothing but the complete integral. We need uh, to be careful. So uh, this arises uh, in power of one. So we need, uh, because this is the convention, we need to take the square root here. And now we can look uh, at applications involving this complete integral. And uh, uh, one important application uh, that uh, immediately comes to mind is Ramanujan series for one over pi. There's a beautiful survey by Barua, Berndt, and Chang, uh, and uh, a quote from, from, this, uh, from this paper. Uh, in 87, uh, John and Peter Borwein in the book Pi and the Arithmetic Geometric Means succeeded in proving all 17 of Ramanujan series for one over, over pi. All these identities were discovered by Ramanujan in India before he arrived in England. This is a remarkable fact that he did this prior to stay with Hardy. And to this end, the Borwines used relation of exactly the type that we did in one example by the guess and proof paradigm. And using this paradigm, so this entry, for instance, that we did previously is uh, uh, Theorem 5.6 in the book by the Borwines, and there are other identities listed. So I just uh, uh, I'm echoing here, I copied from my version of the book, I copied these uh, five identities. The other identity is the identity, this is the identity one that I don't display here. And uh, they involve other modular functions uh, like Klein's absolute, absolute J invariant. And there are several other identities of this kind. So far, you have seen two F1s here, but there are also three F2s. In general, I think you, you can go, uh, I, I'm pretty sure you can go higher. Not sure whether this would make sense in uh, uh, approximating one over pi or some version of pi. But nevertheless, with the method I showed you, you can and actually also discover if you fix the left-hand side and you see there is a certain interest in having the left-hand side fixed in this way. And if you play on the argument here, of course, this is what you yourself have to come up with. If you fix the argument, you can derive the corresponding differential equation. And if it's solvable in terms of a 3F2, you find exactly this relation as we did in our previous example. So for instance, this example, this one was used by uh, Bill Gosper uh, uh, for a while he was world record, record uh, holder in computing the digits of pi. So this identity, was used by Gosper and uh, he asked, for instance, Tigaski whether he has a proof of this identity uh, uh, that then was found that Ramanujan uh, uh, had before he came to England, but the Borwines proved this identity that Ramanujan had. Sagier referred to Fricke Klein. Uh, so what Fricke and Klein did, for instance, they used, you have seen in Arthur Dix's talk, uh, Eisenstein series, so we take the E4, you take uh, the modular invariant where you, uh, which is obtained by taking the eta to the 24. So this is the modular discriminant in the denominator. You take the third power of the E4. This eliminates the automorphic factor. So the J tau is a modular function. So if you use this and you can uh, ask, given this modular form on the left-hand side, the E4, the Eisenstein, uh, what are the coefficients if you expand locally in terms of the inverse of this uh, modular invariant. And what you find uh, by guessing, you find that the coefficient sequence satisfies this three-term recurrence. 
but uh, this is not the end is guessing. As I said, you now can use the algorithm uh, uh, mod, uh, mod forms DE for proving the correctness of uh, uh, this uh, 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 recurrences by proving the correctness of the equivalent differential equation for the Y generating function. Uh, uh, Fricke and Klein also looked uh, into variations on the theme. So since the E4, the Eisenstein has weight four, you might speculate what happens if you take the fourth root and indeed things uh, shrink and get more nicely that you see here at the bottom line. Another expansion uh, is, you see you have here a 2F1 with a certain selection, a certain choice of parameter, which if fit exactly to Clausen's identity. So this is confirmed by playing the same uh, guess and proving game as I explained. You find this identity, which is also of some relevance in the context of Calabiao varieties. Fritz Beukers came up with an alternative uh, uh, proof uh, 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 formulation of, of Aperi's proof of the irrationality of Zeta 3. Uh, so in his version, the, a, a crucial sequence came up in, the, in a problem of exactly the type as we considered, given a modular form on the left-hand side, given this modular function on the right-hand side, determine these coefficients. If we do our game, we can prove that the coefficients are determined by this three-term recursion that uh, in Aperis approach were presented in terms of this uh, definite binomial sum. This approach by Beukers uh, goes also via the differential equation, not following this guess and proof paradigm, but he is discussing differential equations that our methods can shed additional light on, this, uh, uh, on the various differential equations obtained by Beukers. And the, I have one minute to conclude. Uh, we presented a new algorithmic approach for proving and for discovery of relations of this form, modular function, modular form on the left hand side, expanded locally in powers of the modular function. The CK were determined first guessed and set, then proved to satisfy a certain holonomic recurrence. We expect, so this is uh, kind of a recent development, so we expect that there are many applications waiting, uh, especially for the proving aspect, also discovery, but also for the proving aspect when you use the uh, algorithm mode forms uh, to prove the validity of the corresponding differential equation. Uh, let me also mention that the, uh, the strategy can be applied for partition generating functions. This would be another story. This, for instance, would fit to study generating functions uh, also studied by Ramanujan, uh, for instance, Ramanujan observed that the partition numbers sitting at this arithmetic subsequence are divisible by 11. This is explained in the paper if you want uh, to have a further look on this aspect. And the last entry here is uh, by referring to, to a marvelous book uh, review by Dick Askey. So he wrote a really beautiful uh, instructive as always when Dick is saying something, instructive book review on the book of uh, the Borbines, and I stop here. Thank you, Peter. Is there, does anyone have any questions? Uh, Tom Kornwinder. Hi, uh, Tom. Hi, Tom. Uh, uh, Peter, uh, um, you discussed uh, uh, earlier in your lecture modular forms as limits of Q holonomic functions. So, so uh, you gave one example. Is it only something for which you have examples of which the theorem? No theorems, uh, Tom. So far, any other questions? I, I may have another question. <laughs> very good, very good. Uh, so, so what about um, um, holonomic or q holonomic functions of several variables that uh, that, that yeah. uh, things go go, go on? Uh, I, well, waiting for being attacked. Uh, so far, uh, maybe uh, I'm not sure whether Christoph Kutchen is in the audience. Maybe he he did something already in this direction. So what he does is his package, his holonomic function package allows to set up uh, simultaneously uh, relations that involve shifts in variables and the differential operator. And uh, if you, this is done in, 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 in algebras that allow the formulation of these things, it's called ORI algebras that allow the formulation in this way. So there are versions that deal with by basic. Uh, so you have, not only Q, you have uh, P, so to say, as a second base, it's this by, by basic uh, uh, variance. But this would be something uh, I think it's really worth to study. Actually, 
Christoph and I discussed this after I attended the Opsfar. I think it was in Opsfar. We celebrated Murad's uh, around birthday of Murad. And I heard Curling's talk. And uh, I, I got greatly ex ex inspired by Curling's talk. And I thought, we need to go multivariate. Uh, so far, this is still on our to-do list. But it's uh, uh, theoretically, uh, it, it's, it, it should be quite possible to do something reasonable there. Maybe you use Kruppner basis elimination methods and so on. Thanks for the question. Uh, maybe I can add because we talked, Peter. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm in the audience. Hi, hi, <laughs> uh, the identity of Suslov that you showed. So actually, uh, I, I did this with the multivariate version. That makes the initial value checking easier so that you don't have to deal with parameters. Uh, uh, so I, I actually derived recurrences in all the parameters that were around and, and that makes Christoph, sometimes still, things think easier. We need, still, we need to fine tune if it goes with several Q parameters and uh, multi-basic and so on. So here I'm not so sure yes. whether you can immediately apply. I have to admit that this is a part of my code that has not been much used and much tested. <laughs> so I would be happy if yes. you have examples that we can try. Yes, exactly. Any other questions or comments? Well, let's let's thank our, our uh, Peter for a great talk. Thank you.